All right, we are live. <sighs> Hello, Maxine. Hello, Ashley. <laughs> Hello, Goddess Moon Temple, and anybody that's watching on the replay on YouTube or Instagram. I'm Ashley Sunshine, and this is Maxine Anders Isaacs, and we're here to do an activation interview. Um, Maxine will be a guest mentor on the upcoming Sacred Business Codes nine month group program. She's going to be a guest mentor to really guide us into how to hold sacred transformational space for others from a safe and grounded place. Um, I really look up to Maxine because she, she and I have actually ran uh, retreats together with the Red Tent Tribe. And Maxine really held the, the grounding in our retreats. She was kind of that overseeing eye, making sure that everybody was safe and grounded and would really keep an eye out to make sure that anybody maybe needed some touch or maybe needed some talk. And, and even if she wouldn't go do it herself, she would inform the rest of the team about uh, you know, how we can take care of our people in the best way. And she would always give the most amazing speeches at the end for the participants to, to do self-care. So Maxine taught me so much over the last years, and I'm so, so excited to have her here today. And I'll just introduce her. She is a breathwork therapist with a somatic and trauma-informed approach. And she has so much training right now. She's about to complete her training in Family Constellations. Um, so she works with that, and she does a recall healing She's an acupuncturist, a body worker, and an energy healer for many, many years now, um, and really just has a huge amount of wisdom to share with us. So again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And I'd love to hear from you just a little bit about you know, your story of you know, what are you doing and from your perspective, and how did you get there? Like, What's your awakening? What was your story to bring you to where you're at right now? Um, so, hey, Goddess, Moon Circle, Temple, um, I guess my awakening started for, uh, when I was 21. I was involved in a serious car accident. Um, I was hurt. My body was in shock. I was in shock. And then two years later, I was in another car accident. And through this experience, um, I started understanding shock. <laughs> trauma, pain, chronic pain, um, and it was from then moving forward, I, I, I was in a quite a post-traumatic stress uh, state, and I used to see, thanks to my father, who had a healer, he sent me to see someone, her name was Erica, and she was like my role model in this world, um, and I was just in awe of, of like this world where people talk this way and share this way and hold space this way um, and it was very much part of the beginnings of my journey and she actually said to me I think you should go and become an acupuncturist and that's how it all kind of began my journey so that was 24 years ago um, and I kind of from then forward it became my life like there's no other way to put it like self-awareness being on my own path, supporting other people, it, it came from that point. Um, and then my latest, because I have a tendency to have crisis for an upgrade, which is something I'm working on to not have to, to miss the crisis bit in the upgrade. Mm. And it was last year, in the beginning of Corona time, that I uh, had a health situation arise. And it kind of knocked my whole ground again. And I understood from that that I've been doing all this work for so many years. So many years doing so, many, so much stuff, so dedicated to myself and others. And I realised there was a complete missing link. There was something, something was missing. There was a gap. Now I understand because I've been diving deep. It was the nervous system that something in my nervous system was not regulated. And even though on the surface level, day to day, I've been functioning great, I've been working lots, life, raising a family, being a married woman, suddenly I, I got in touch with what was happening in my nervous system. And it wasn't pretty. And it took me onto a deeper dive and journey into really understanding the complexities of trauma 
the, the importance of working with the nervous system and if we, we have to bring that in when we're doing this work. So that's, I guess, my own personal journey is what has inspired me to become more trauma-informed um, and how precious we are, you know, to really understand what we're dealing with. Um, and I saw that personally, and it's very much part of my message to make other people aware. Wow, amazing. Oh, I love how your father sent you to a, yeah. a healer and that your healer's name was Erica because yeah. Erica was also my first teacher. Yeah. So that's amazing. Um, wow. If you're watching and tuning in, and we'd love to, for you to say hello. If you're on the replay, you can comment. And if you have any questions during this, then you can feel free to share them. Um, wow. So many things you touched on, the crisis, needing the crisis in order to evolve, right? And I, I feel like I just wanted to say about that, that I, I'm receiving messages lately, like from the world and from guides that, you know, we no longer need to suffer. So it is possible to grow and to move to that next level of growth without the crisis. So it's interesting because when you said, there's two things I want to say about that. What Great. Rose. Number one, it's interesting because in my human design, for anyone who knows about human design, human design. Um, my gates is in my design, this crisis line, um, which is interesting, but doesn't mean it has to look the way it has. But what I've understood is that Often, if we've had an early or developmental trauma, our nervous system gets wired up in a way, something in our subconscious that it, it's playing out. And this is why it's something is playing out all the time. And that is why we need the education and the awareness of the nervous system. Because mm. it's, it, often you will find people who have these crises, if you go all the way back, and don't forget ancestry and generational, and really take that all into consideration, there's often a reason why this is playing out. So the work really, it, it's going to the root, and for my opinion now, it's, it's really working with the nervous system. Mm. So it's like going, so your nervous system will begin to kind of send you triggers, or, or um, not triggers, but like will send you kind of signals before the crisis happens? I think it's wired up to feel alive is crisis. It's like there's a, there's a connection that it's like how it's like it's just a wiring and we need to, most people don't necessarily tap into that and actually see that if we're in that from an early stage, that level of stress, we will be quite possibly unconsciously bringing more of that because it's what we know in our system again and again because we recognize it and only when we can catch it, we can do something with it if we choose. It's the awareness. It's, it's all about so much of this, what I'm understanding. I have to catch myself throughout the day. It, it, when we're working in this way, it's not a once a week session. It's not a, it's the, to make these kind of changes that I'm talking about is, a, is catching yourself throughout the day, taking full accountability. Yeah. Wow. That's really huge. Mm -hmm. So uh, before we get to the trauma, just let's let's close the the corner around the nervous system. And what would you give? You know, I find it so important to, to like what you said. You know, constantly be taking care of our nervous system, right? Doing practices, doing you know reminders for ourselves in order to. So, what's some advice or what's some practical tips that you can give to? therapists, uh, space holders, uh, boss babes who are putting themselves out there in the world and we know that it's, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's stressful to to put yourself out there, to do a launch, to do these things, to like reveal yourself to the world. So what's some practical tips uh, that you could give to somebody to do that regulation of their nervous system? Yeah, I think that it begins with the noticing of what's going on. It's being mindful of what's happening in my system right now. In every moment, like, obviously not every moment, but, but what is happening? And more and more, like, felt sense meditations where we're really, more and more, the basis of it is seeing what is actually happening. Noticing the sensations that you're experiencing in your body. Noticing what is going on. So you're, so if we're a space holder, for example, if our, we are re deregulated and we're going in to do sessions with people and we're all over the place. We're not, we're, we need to be holding the space, which means regulating ourselves throughout the session. 
for me what that looks like and um, I, I notice when I'm doing sessions or groups sometimes I will I've learned to regulate myself just by taking a deep big breath to kind of bring myself back sometimes for me I use a spray because scent really helps me to bring myself back sometimes I might be wearing a ring and this is a resource for me just to give myself you know to bring myself back because we can't we need to be aware to not get lost in someone else's field mm, mm -hmm. in someone else's story and we don't want to be resonating creating a resonance and getting lost and then suddenly we need to we need to hold our center and raise that no matter what like to keep working on that so I think the main thing I'd say is be aware of what's going on. And if you're a boss babe, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> that from a business point of view, it's if you're going to put something out, you want to do it from a regulated place. You want to really bring sacredness in before you put it out there. Really ground yourself. Um, after a session or after washing your hands, feeling cold water on your face if it's been an intense experience. Um, but it all starts with awareness and coming back to the body because we can't always go straight in, but we can we can be gentle and we can befriend it, like befriending the nervous system. Yeah. Wow. And there are techniques and breathing techniques and things that can support that, of course. But sometimes for me, it can be as simple as putting my arms and just rocking until I yawn or putting using eye movements. You know, there's a number of things we can do. Um, but I think it's more about, for me, it's the catching myself because it's so easy to live life deregulated yeah. and we, we want to be aware to, to bring that awareness back to centre. Yes, yes. Oh, living life deregulated. It's like such a norm it's now. It's an epidemic. That's the, the epidemic. That's the epidemic. That's the yeah, epidemic. That everybody's walking around with frazzled nervous in systems mode. in survival yeah, mode. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a catastrophe. For me, what I see is that's the saddest thing of all right now is how much... Because um, if you think about it, is we all carry the history of our ancestry, the generations before. So right now, for a lot of people, their nerve, it's it's from all the fear this last year and all what's happened gone down with, with COVID, it's it's like pressed the buttons in people and from traumas they didn't even know existed. In fact, mm. that's what inspired me to get onto the uh, Family Constellation trauma therapy training was because I really understood that, that we, have, we can't just see what it is now, we need to see where we come from, the whole. Yeah, yes. And we're carrying around like all of our experiences from our life and our ancestry and even past lives, some people might say. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, so let us, let's talk about that. What is trauma? Because I think that there's this, um, there's this idea that trauma is like, you know, if something major didn't happen to you, then you don't get to say that you went through a trauma. Exactly. Or, yeah, and so in your opinion, in your perspective, what is trauma? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you based on what I see in my practice because... Of course, we have the big T's. We have the big T's. We have the abuse, accidents, natural disasters. I mean, I, I don't need to tell you. I think we all know what are classified as war, the big T's. But what we don't, or in the past, didn't give space as much for was the smaller T's. And it can be a single moment of despair in a child. It can be the developmental traumas, the mother can't connect um, something's happening it can be that something was going on and no one saw it and someone was feeling a lot of things as a child inside themselves and it just it wasn't being held and they weren't being supported through um, in what I often experience in my work with people is that it's often things that their conscious mind isn't even aware of or things that as an adult they've told themselves oh it's nothing like they've kind of belittled it, but the the nervous system and the child and the body still remembers it as a trauma. And what I see a lot, it, it's like the people say, like, well, you know, I haven't had any trauma. I'm, I've had a very abundant, blessed life. And then you start seeing a little bit more, and it's in the gaps, it's in the corners, these things. And it doesn't have to be big things. It just kind of creating a slight somatic constriction in the body, 
holding something there. And if we can meet these places, it, it can soften and it can open and it can create a level of freedom. So trauma is not just the big things. It can be the small things. It can be a medical procedure. It can be, which again, you weren't even aware how many women with birth and it's like, well, we all give birth, so it's fine. And it's like, well, actually, it's something that needs to be looked at and talked about more. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just the bullying. It's the, I was sitting in a room and something, um, and I, I feel cool to say this because it's just come to me. Like my son, for example, told me two years after he wanted to leave the school that he, why? He had gone upstairs and he had seen a big boy uh, hurting a younger boy. And he just visually saw this. He wasn't part of it. And that big boy said to him, he was only about seven at the time, and that the older boy said to him, if you tell anyone, I'll get you. Wow. And that stayed, and it, when it came out two years later, why he wanted to leave, it was, you know, it changed. I, I understood and to this day, when they're older boys, he has a constriction, and we're working through it. But there is, in these things, because these things that can seem like nothing, or no one even knows about, children don't always say things. We think that they're telling the adults, but they're not, even if you're closely connected. It only comes out later, because it, it gets put away. It gets put away. Yeah. Oh, it's like these negative experiences that we have, that... that get put away in our brain and then they affect how we respond to another situation yeah which is totally different and maybe not threatening at all but our brain and our consciousness and our nervous system might perceive it as threatening when it's not yeah. and when you put it that way we realize like we're all walking all around time. with that all the time yeah exactly exactly and we don't need to make it like oh we need to be like you know dead you know but we just need to acknowledge it that it's not over there, people over there have it, I don't have it. We all have got our stories. And it's just, we don't need to get stuck in the past or the story. But we do want to learn to regulate ourselves more. And to feel safe in our body and in the world. Yeah. Does trauma only tend to like happen in a meaningful way when we're children? Or can we, like as adults, can we get re-traumatized? Or we get traumatized as adults? Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, if so... What's the difference? Well, I think that often, often the same kind of areas are getting re-traumatized. It may have started mm -hmm. from back then, but it, cycles can repeat themselves until conflicts are resolved. And it may look different, and it, but often when we're being something, you know, my car accidents, for example, something very, people will say, it, it, these things happen, it, just a car accident. I know now with what I know, it's not just happens. There's things often, and it, that's how I see the world anyway, um, that things do start back there, but it can look different as an adult. But we're often experiencing the same sensation, emotion, it can still bring something up. Yeah. And we, so many of us as adults, we can't be in our body, because when we really go in, it can be too overwhelming. Certainly was for me. And I'm mm -hmm. still working. I'm work in progress. Mm -hmm. You know, I own it. Mm -hmm. I felt very unsafe in my being. And it, this is why I think that safety was absolute, like... Necessity. Necessity, because it's what I needed. Right. Wow, that's really powerful. Yeah. Like, understanding... And that's where it goes back to the beginning of our conversation, where, you know, when we're holding transformational space for others, the way we can handle it in the safest way is if we feel safe and we actually can be in our body which means us as healers us as as you know space holders we got to do that work on ourselves like it is of utmost importance that we do that work on ourselves that we understand how to regulate our own nervous system that we're actually able to enter into the body which means we need to face you know the traumas that we've that we've gone through in the past yeah, all in its own time. As I said, if if I knew a year ago, like I didn't realize, I didn't know. Right. I was. And there's always new layers. That's what I was going to say. I was informed as informed as I could be with what I knew, but I, I I when I understood, then it kind of deepened my awareness. So we can only you know, but in this we can only 
hold as much as we can hold to. Yeah. And there's always more to, to unfold and to like peel yeah. off the layers. Yes. It's really complex. Yeah. And it's not to be afraid of it. Like it doesn't have to be like that's the other thing. We can do it in a way with softness yeah. and with grace. It doesn't have to be and I think people are scared with this and I understand, but often the pain is the trying to stay away from it. That's where the pain is because we can meet it. You know, the whole idea is when we're working in this way is that we are resourcing first. We are resourcing, resourcing so that someone is ready to meet what's there. It's not like, boom, let's go straight in. Yeah. The environment is created so it's safe. First. Yeah. yeah. All right, talk to me about resourcing. So what does it mean resourcing and, and what are resources? So I, we can have like external resources, of course, which can be the nature going to the sea, going for a walk, something outside of you that just touching it can be a resource for you, um, the physical things that we can bring with us. Um, I remember once after a particularly challenging uh, session I had with um, for myself, I, uh, my therapist gave me a stone and that was a resource for me uh, to take with me. Um, internal resourcing is it can be a place in your body that feels more comfortable, more or neutral or relaxed, like a place that like, you know, that by touching it or, t or focusing on it will just create a place of grounding where you can be in. Um, what we often do is begin a session with a felt sense practice, like going through the body, noticing the sensations, noticing a place which feels good, a place that feels neutral, and then bringing our awareness and our attention there for a bit, so that that is the root, that is the ground. Before we do anything else, we stay with our resource, and then if anything gets too much, we keep going back to it. Mm -hmm. So you don't stay in the, in the areas which is strong constriction, you can pendulate between and keep going back to the resource. Wow. Yeah. Uh, friendships are resources. Family can be resources. You know, s women's circles can be resources. All, all different things. But each person will have their own list. And I recommend that everyone writes a list. What are my resources? And really, because then in the moment you need your resources, often you're so discombobulated, you can't think what they are. So my advice is to put it on your fridge, put it on your cupboard. What are my resources that you remember when you really need it? And then start there. And how would you define resources? Like what are the things that make me feel good? The things that ground me? The things that... Okay. Yeah, the things that feel good. The things that where I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Where I can breathe. Um, where I can... And for some people, if there's a lot going on, it, it might have to be a beginning stage, a resource of where it feels neutral especially if someone's in a lot of pain because they can't, it's not so easy to find. Feel good. Yeah. yeah, so there's a scale of what people will be able to touch on. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, that's so cool. I, I love that idea because, you know, it's so easy to focus on what's wrong. It's like our automatic mm -hmm. pattern to focus on, you know, what's in pain or what doesn't feel good. And our, all of our consciousness will go to that, right? And, and to train our minds... To, yes, look at that. Like, don't run away from that. Don't avoid it. You know, we can feel it. Exactly. But then also half of our awareness or, you know, for a moment can go to exactly. the place that feels good so that we're not just kind of victims or, like, subject just the pain, right? That we can also simultaneously feel the good. Exactly. The good. And resourcing, for some people, it's the only thing we can do to start with. It, it takes, and that's the thing... Um, in, you know, we, it's for some people resourcing for a long time before we can even do more. And it's being patient with this process. It's not, it depends on someone's, what's going on for someone, but it's not an overnight chip chuck, you know. It, but for me, it's really going to the root of the nervous system level. Yeah. For my experience. It's because a lot of things can feel amazing and cathartic, but is it really changing? For me, big question mark, because that was my experience. So. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I think like you're touching on something that's so important that, um, you know, we, we tend to move through life 
thinking we need to sacrifice ourselves for others or thinking we need to fulfill a certain role or a certain thing and and it's bringing us back like stepping into the new earth stepping into kind of you know being that healer being the way shower uh you know connecting into what life is all about and and finding freedom and happiness in this lifetime yeah. it's like our priority is actually really deeply taking care of ourselves yeah. yeah and finding those resources and so many of us kind of put ourselves on the back burner right like let me take care of everything else first and maybe i'll get my resource you know later and i feel like what you're saying and what i'm really receiving from this transmission from you is like resource first yes. like get yourself you know find the things you love and hold them and and connect and ground and then from there go into your family go into your work go into we have to, we have to. it's like if you imagine the energy right now and in in how it's been it's like this, so we need to work that bit harder to, to find our centre. I, I mean, I live a very busy existence, and what I have to do is segment things now, like put things in frames, so that, because in the past, mm. I, would, I have a lot of fire and excitement, and that was part of what would burn me out. And now, I'm very busy still, but I don't stop, nothing gets in the way of my walk in the field in the morning, and now with my gorgeous puppy. <laughs> nothing um, nothing gets in the way of certain practices I do throughout the day. It's, it's, I understand that if I don't have that frame, I can't, folk, I can't function right, which means it's no good for me, for my family, for my clients, and for anyone. So I've had to completely change and be very boundaries and strict, more with myself, that I keep, it's a discipline and it's a commitment, because otherwise... I mean, I saw what happened, and it's not good. Yeah. Wow, that's really powerful mm. to have those non-negotiables. Yeah, it's you know, non-negotiable. Like segment and segments yeah, of your I day. Love yeah, I love that too. I, I learned that from Abraham Hicks. Yeah, exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Amazing. Um, but yeah, for me, walking in nature, and I talk a lot. I do voice notes when I'm walking. It's like I have my conversation with spirit, God. But you know, that's when I talk and in nature, and it's 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 very very impactful. Wow, incredible, yeah. incredible. Oh, well, you touched on something. Let's just see if there's any. Hello, everybody. Um, let's, um, what you touched on, too, about the difference between um, resourcing and releasing. Yeah. Or like having a resource experience versus having a cathartic experience. Yeah. So it's quite interesting because anyone who knows me, I'm a breath work work with breath work I've done many group processes journeys ceremonies inner dance so people uh music impactful whoo it's all very like ah. and, <laughs> and you know I'm the first to say it you know that's what I was bringing because that's what I knew and it's not that I don't think it was it had its place because I think that there is a place for we need to release when the pressure is building there is a but what's really happening is the big question mark. It's, it's things are happening, but I do think we need to, if we imagine we can have 10 people in a room, 20 people in a room, and for me, if even three of them don't have a window of tolerance to hold a, a lot of movement of energy, where the energy is moving through quickly, then it can be too much for their system. So now I've understood that I really looked at that, like deeply, like what's going on here? Like, do I feel okay with this? And I realized for me, I had to change how I was doing things personally in groups because we can have a release through the resourcing. But if we don't, if we have a release and underneath the ground's not solid, I'm not sure long term how impactful it is. And because I'm really about uh, changing things, changing, not just short term, but like how can we transform this? How can we upgrade our life and really feel good? We, For me, it makes more sense now to really focus on the resourcing and from that the release will come. As opposed to blasting a system, which may, if they've got a good window of tolerance, be very good for but may not, and I, and I, because of my nature and my personal life story, I consider everyone who's in that space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And it feels more accurate for me right now. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So this goes into kind of being trauma informed, right? Or being so, okay, there's a couple things. So it's like you're able to, when you're holding space for a group, you're able, because you're grounded and you're centered in your own regulated nervous system, you're able to look objectively or, or a little bit more objectively at the group and at the energy. And then from that grounded place, you can sense kind of who is more open and able to handle this kind of experience or who has maybe tension in their body or is, how do you know, like what, yeah, let's talk about intuition. How do you, how are you able to, to sense who's ready for it, who's less ready? Well, I think the truth is we don't know. And that's Great. the point. Yes. It <laughs> is coming into it with the knowing that we don't exactly know what's going on in someone's system. And for that reason, we need to be mindful of that. What we can do and how we can use our intuition is, as I said, it's it's coming, really making sure that you're in your center, you're using your breath, you're raising your, your hair, you're using what you know to be fully present, no matter what is happening in the space, you are holding your center. And then you are listening with your body, not just your mind. You're like listening, you're like to the space, you're using your eyes and your observing what's happening you and there you'll be seeing possibly someone's body who's in a very strong constriction or someone who's just not breathing at all or someone who looks very very open but never presume anything just firstly it's just scanning the space and noticing checking in how my body's receiving this space mm -hmm. um the same sound listening to sounds people are making what their body is doing like, is there a movement happening? Is there complete... Because especially when people are completely still. I've had it when people have supported the spaces that I'm running, like, nothing's happening, they're not doing anything. And I'm like, don't make that presumption. There can be a lot happening inside right now, just ensure they're grounded. You know, don't presume because it doesn't look dramatic that nothing is happening. More can be happening sometimes in the, the more quieter areas of the room um, and so we then I always um, if there's going to be touch is a really can be a very good tool but also we need permission and that might be a spoken permission or it might be uh, intuitive permission that someone's body is allowing and again it's not going straight in for a strong touch or straight onto them so they can like jump their system and actually, again, not be so good there. But to, if you can inform, maybe start away from the body, so in a less threatening place, and so that it, people are prepared for you to be there instead of pouncing on them, um, which I've seen happen before, like to really be in tune with that. Um, and reminding them that we're there. It can be a small whisper that I, I see you like something very, very simple that they can set them off and, and just less is more. Mm -hmm. Less is more and just noticing and noticing what you're feeling and, and just, it's like almost being a channel there and seeing, but also with boundaries, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's not like just floating around and making sure they're breathing, like that they're grounded, because sometimes if people are lying there and they're not grounded and they're not getting attended to, they can re-traumatize very easily and tapping into something and you're not aware. Mm, yes, okay. It, it, it's like taking care, like when you learn how to take care of your own nervous system, it gets easier to help take care of other people's nervous yes. system. And I was just speaking about this uh, with my partner last night about how I learned in massage therapy mm. school that because um, I did a massage training where you know when you when you're gonna do deep work in the muscle tissue you have to you know really go in slow and you know start the contact and then make it really slow because you're working directly with nerves nerves are what create muscle tension right and you want to help release those nerves you have to go in slow and then you can do deep work but the slower you go That's the deeper you can go, and the deeper you go, the slower you must go. Exactly, and that is the key with trauma. 
Mm. Who, I was on last weekend with uh, Sakino. Uh, she's in Germany. She's my family constellation and trauma uh, therapy training teacher. Amazing. And she was basically really like the key when you're working in this way is slowness. Really slow. And our ego mind, sometimes I see this, like people want to speed ahead. They want to speed ahead. And it's always like reminding them, like, I, I understand and thank you. But your body's not in agreement with that yet. And honoring the body and the body's wisdom and letting it unfold at its pace, not the ego mind's pace, yeah. who wants to rush ahead. And also breaks. We need time to integrate. We need breaks. We need time. We need space to integrate. I just did a workshop the other day. I taught here in the group about um, about creating curriculum, and it was the same. Like less is more. So often we think we need to pack all these things into our experience. I'm laughing. You know where I'm laughing? Oh, it was the red tent. <laughs> <laughs> the first red tent was like boom, 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 boom. Yes. Yes, we learned so much from that. And even, you know, we didn't even follow that arc of the experience, right? Like just blasting all the time because we, you know, it was it was beautiful because we thought that that's, you know, that's the best way to give them the most value. But, you know, yeah. we learned. Yes, less is more. And, and having that arc, right? Easing into it, going into the intensity and then easing out of it. So really the intensity is only a small portion of the experience. It's like the wave of inner dance, actually. Yeah, yeah cool, cool. Yeah. And the and yoga. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's it. Yeah, amazing. Um, okay, cool. So this really leads us into the part that, like, that, you know, you're going to come as a mentor in Sacred Business Codes to help mentor us. And something that is coming to me now that it was just so critical in my journey as a coach. So I became a coach, and as we know, there's no kind of uh, over-governing body of coaches. It's this relatively new field that is very much needed and very much, um, you know, I feel that it's, it's really good when coupled with therapy um, and can be also good on its own, but when, you know, it, we're, we're therapy-informed. And, um, but I noticed that a lot of coaches out there, they don't have, you know, obviously a lot of them don't have proper training and they don't have supervision. And this is something that I only learned in the last year that like all psychologists and therapists are meant to have supervisors. Mm -hmm. And this is so that, you know, um, anytime we get emotionally wrapped up with a client's story or energetically intertwined with them, that we have someone that we can help to unravel us mm -hmm. so that we're actually able to show up as like, as not entangled with their energetic field, right? Because this is really toxic in a therapy client relationship, right? A, in a coach client relationship to become emotionally entangled can be really toxic and also not being trauma informed. Right? So having a supervisor, having a therapist that we work with behind the scenes, then when we show up, we are trauma-informed. We are supported. So, so what is being trauma-informed? Because I know you've done a lot of work with your own trauma and also with you know, working with your client's trauma, and now you're in this trauma uh, training, which you're almost finished. Um, so what is being trauma-informed, and why is this so important for, for space holders? It's also a hot topic lately. Like a lot of people are in there talking about, you know, we run trauma informed programs. And I think a lot of people don't really know what that is yet. Well, I think it's about an awareness. It's about an awareness that you may have in your space someone who's carrying in their nervous system things they may or may not be aware of. And what I learned is that, like, I remember when I came out of acupuncture school, and one of the things that I was we would talk about was how to handle mental health problems and I remember someone came for who was suffering with bipolar mm -hmm. and at the beginning I you know you're taught and you would go in the textbooks and it's like oh well that's what you can do for that and it's like you can go a bit gung-ho at the beginning when you're not experienced and think oh I can do this I can do anything because that's when and and the thing is We need to really check in with ourselves if we really can. And I'm supervising someone right now um, who's a breath worker. 
And I told her that A, we need to be able to sleep at night. And if you're leaving sessions worried about your clients or you're feeling some discomfort, it's like checking in with yourself after a session too, what's happening. And that's why supervision then is so important because it's like checking in if this is accurate. Because also someone's story, may you might start resonating. There can be a resonance. And that also is not helpful to them or to you. And it's being really integral. And even if, like, I feel like with experience, like, I, for me, I want to sleep at night. I want to, you know, I know my limits. I know what I'm able to take on and I don't move even an inch more anymore. I don't do it because I understand that I, I'm an integrity in how I'm working and I know that. And I really am not interested in um, going places that aren't going to be good for the client. Now, I work often uh, with psychology. I have one particular psychologist. We're actually building a program together at the moment about nervous system health. Mm, and cool. there are certain clients I will only work with if I'm also working with a psychologist. And we work as a team. Mm, wow. And that creates, because sometimes we need different approaches to create a balance. It's not one or the other. And I think that what I'm hearing of what you're saying is, to not get gung-ho, to not think you can just do anything and everything and trust, but my intuition tells me I can. I mean, we want to trust our intuition. That's great. And I'm all for that, and I'm massively supportive of that. But I do feel there is a level of trauma-informed trauma we need to be. And what does that mean? It means understanding how the nervous system works, understanding how energy can get trapped in the system, Mm. I'm just, it's, it starts with education, it starts with your own process of understanding your own nervous system because you can only really teach what we embody ourselves, which means going on your own journey with this, making a decision, taking supervisors, you know, this is why, this is, there is a logic to it, we need to be kept in check, we need support, and it's, and for me, the best thing has been working as a team. Because with trauma, there's no one approach. And sometimes we need breaks from maybe the somatic body work, but then we need to integrate with the talk therapy. And so the combination, and obviously lifestyle, and dietary, and supplements, this is when I have seen, when we take into account and full responsibility, we can't do the work for our clients. Yeah. We can inspire, we can give them tools, we can give our heart and soul, but we, I mean, we, we can, we can want it, but they need to do it. That's what yeah. I mean. It's like, we can't do it for them. And we need to let go of that responsibility. And the other thing is to understand the slowness is key because if we move too quickly, we don't, are not informed, it can be too much for a system of a person. And it might not be obvious to you. That's the thing. It might not be obvious. It's not like they're going to come and say, that was too much for me. And that's the point. They just will walk away and something's left open or something's not good there. Yeah, yeah. They won't say anything most of the time. You so, only hear from the ones who do. You know. Yeah, yes. Wow, that's really powerful. And like really checking in with your own system afterward because you know. And that's the thing, like we're like, you know, if you're watching this, if you're tuning in, like you're probably a witch. <laughs> you're probably intuitive, but you know, priestess, and 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 I really see you as that way too, kind of this like you know psychic, and um, and so you know that you know, right? I mean, we just need to take time to check in, yes, and and scan, right? Scan our body, and that's why what you said in the beginning about doing body scans and yeah. is so helpful, okay. yeah. And, and then also scanning, you know, your client's field. Like, uh, do you do that? Do you have any practices where you, like, tune into your, like, this is kind of what you just said, said, yes, you do it, but, like, where you tune into the client's field after the session? After the session, I normally, I take some time just to contemplate the session, and normally I am more checking in after the session how I'm feeling. Like what is left with me? Like what is what is what is um, and if I feel like like what's going on in me right now? 
that's what I check in. And um, that will tell you it all. Yeah. yeah. Because um, I think there's a lot of, it's like listening to their bodies and listening to our own bodies. And the intuition is like, I do work, I do trust my intuition. And it's not that I'm, I'm all for intuition led work, like to be clear, I'm all for it and how to work with the intuition. But I think that what comes with is the knowledge with the intuition and that combination keeps it safe and grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so important and so key. And I think because we live in such a fast paced, you know, world that it's so easy to finish a session and then move on to the next thing. Oh yeah. Right. And taking that time to be with yourself, check in, scan your field, contemplate the session. It's like, the difference, it's night and day. Yeah. It's and I told the, the, the woman that I uh, supervise, actually, I told her today that I would recommend that she, and especially for people out there who are newer at this work, to journal a little bit after a session. Mm, to great. remember how you felt after, uh, to scan your body and to notice what's happening in your system um, because it will help you to understand what's going on. Wow. Because yes. I think when you're newer... You're often, it, it's like afterwards, you're like, did I do it? You know, you haven't, you haven't got the experience yet. And so to build that confidence is to really, to close it yourself after the session. Yes, yes. Reflect and close. Yeah. Love it. Yes. And then you also touched on collaboration, right? And working with other therapists, working with other, and, and when Hila and I did our interview, we also touched on that, right? How, because I used to have packages where I would bring her in because she does the energy work. Right, so I would do more of the business work, but then of course, when we're talking about your business, we're talking about everything. Like when we're talking about how you show up and hold space, and what you're offering to your to your people, and how your it's like your whole system comes on board. Absolutely. So to do that energy work, to have that team, and and also realizing that we we can't necessarily do it all. Like, if someone comes to you and they have a bipolar, like, maybe you're not the best person. No, I won't work with it anymore. Like, that's what I mean. It's like understanding where the limits are. Knowing what we don't for touch and where, where we, we, we can find them someone else. And we should not leave someone. Like, help find them. Like, this is where the heart comes in. Not just, I, I can't help you. Right. But help them to find someone else. But, but it's, it's just being aware of what yeah. you can work with and not pushing yourself yeah I think people really respect that like I think that you know if I said listen like I could take you in and take the money but I'm not going to because I'm not going to be able to help you the most yeah. you know so here let me let me help you find someone I think people really appreciate that yeah, yeah. you know it's that truth. It's yeah, truth it's truth it's integrity it's, yeah, no, it's not it's, it's not worth being any other way it's it's just not it's when you're dealing with a human psyche yeah you know it's got to respect it not a, you know it's just respect being respected yeah so how do you know that in the beginning like do you have intake form that they fill out that they let you know what's going on with them or do you have like an initial conversation where like you'll kind of assess them and then you have certain criteria they need to meet like how does that work so how do you know like do you yeah um I will always do a, a quick check-in, like conversation with, you know, with, with conversation with someone before they start, just to check they haven't got any psychosis, any bipolar, schizophrenia, certain conditions, glucose. You know, there's certain conditions that I want to be aware of what we're dealing with, to know what medication they're on, um, to know uh, things like that. Then I will accept them for the first session, and this is if it's private work, and then with the first session. I observe them, how they're breathing, I uh, listen deeply to what they want to share, ask questions, and based on that decide what is needed. Um, I don't think at that point, in, and, and then I'm much clearer after the first session because I've really kind of listened to their body, listened to their, their story, and I can give a better idea of what I feel, and, and so that's how it works. And in the group process is like, uh, the retreat I'm running at the end of January. For that, if I don't know someone, um, I like them to come, like who wants to come on the retreat, I would like to, them to come for a session so they have a one-on-one -on -one with me 
before the retreat because most people who have come I probably know in a client so that I can check it's suitable for them it's suitable for the group experience and it's suitable for me as um, facilitators yeah so I'm, I'm really uh, I, I, because it's not worth it for anyone for it to be any other way especially in a group experience and I didn't always do that I didn't always no, do that no this is next level like this is amazing but this is a, but this is a retreat and yes. this is like it's a, you know if it was a group um if it's a group at the moment i'm only doing groups online for therapists so it's slightly different but i still get them to fill in a form now with their medical and etc etc so i'm still aware because it doesn't mean that they're not welcome but it means that i'd have a conversation of let's do it like this way for you and that they'd agree and sign on that that that's how they're going to do it yeah because i don't want to not include people but certain ways of breathing might not be suitable for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, I just checking the time. I had, um, I used, I ran yoga teacher trainings and I used to not check those things. Mm. Big mistake, you know, big mistake. And, and you know, you're taking people on a 200 hours oh. journey, you know, you gotta check. And I had to learn that the hard way. And my profile is a 1-3 mm -hmm. in the human design, which is the investigator martyr, right? So I need to figure stuff out the hard way and just go for it. Like, that's the way I work. That's the way I got to do it. And, the, and, you know, the more I can, I can have the, the support system, my therapist, my friends, you know, having these conversations, my um, uh, massage body worker, you know, all these things to, to support me and help me, to help me have to do that less. Right, but I still had to go through that, and and now I, I definitely do the up take forms and let them we know. Love it. We yeah. love learning. We're doing, the, you know, this is it's, it's all of us. I think it's just through experience we get clearer and clearer and clearer, and it might change again because we're just constantly evolving and changing and growing. And this is what's needed right now, though, in the world we're living in today. Um, it's important. It doesn't mean it's always going to be like this. Please, God, you know, you earth, you know, doesn't have to. But right now, this is the reality. And yeah. and I'm a realist. It's, or, uh, you know, it's not for everyone. Remember, I'm not saying everyone. Some people's window of tolerance is much wider and right. okay. But I consider everyone. Yes. Especially yes. in group processes. Yes. And yeah, and, and also, you know, trial. It's, it is about learning and growing and... And getting more and more accurate all the time. And that's where this check-in with ourself becomes really important. Like, okay, I'm reflecting on this session. Maybe there was some problems. Maybe there was some inaccuracies. Okay, my nervous system is regulated. So I can look at it with love to myself and not beat myself up. Not have all of a sudden all these doubts about my path and my future, which also can happen. And really, you know reflect with a sense of grounding and centeredness and love and say, okay, now I'm learning what I can do better next time, as opposed to spiraling out with ourself, which if we don't have a regulated nervous system, then that can... Or support. And this is or support. The supervision. And this is when the supervision comes in to come along and be like, firstly, it's okay. Firstly, everything's okay. Like, let's just take a moment. And then we can look at what happens with ease and with the regulation and that is why the supervision is because when we're too involved in a, in a situation we don't always see as clearly as we should because our triggers have come up yeah yeah and the last time i ran a group program um i realized i am budgeting in a supervisor mm -hmm. for this Amazing. yeah so that i know that there is a woman behind me who is who knows everything that's going on with this group, who is like basically my mama, and I can run it with that much more confidence and that much more of an open heart and, and knowing that she's just got my back like energetically and she, nobody knows that she's there. Yeah, and I love it's that. so cool. I love that. Yeah. I really love that. I think it's so important. It's amazing. Yeah, me too. I love it so much. I remember you telling me, I was like, wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. So thank you for also being a big trailblazer in this, like stepping into deeper safety, into deeper comfort, right? And even uh, we, we, we spoke, you know, me and Hila spoke also that when we come out of an experience and we feel like great afterward, it's 
it's showing us that we're on the right track and so that we're that we're living our purpose so you kind of what what it's what you're bringing me is like the goal here like and there is no goal right because we're constantly changing and evolving and growing but the goal is to be able to be of service and feel deeply at peace with yourself and also deeply at peace when we don't feel good because mm. even that is an attachment that we have to feel good to like we it's being okay i've come out of sessions and things where I haven't felt good, but it's felt accurate. Like it's mm. felt, it's being okay with it. That it does it. We're not even attached to feeling good. Like anything's okay. It's just another expression of love. And obviously, we don't want to be walking around miserable. But when we're touching these places, we don't because we're we're in contact. We're in that. You know, it's it's a kind of different angle. I think that anything's okay. It's all okay. I love that. Um, yeah. And it's, as I will say, like, this thing around safety is, it took me a long time to come out and just be like, this is what I stand for. And you know that. Because I used to feel so awkward. For, it's like, well, why am I so obsessed with safety? Like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> and it was like, I felt like in the new earthy kind of hippie world, I was a bit judged for it. Like, because I wasn't as free flow with these things. And it was, a, it was a big process for me to come out and say, like, you know what? I really stand behind this. Yes, it might be for my personal life story, but this is for me, and everyone's got their own medicine and their own message to bring to the world. Everyone. And this is mine. And I'm not going to hide it anymore. I'm going to own it that this is what I believe and what I stand behind. So, Amen. Yeah. It was a big journey to own it and not feel like awkward around it. Yes, yes. Oh, and it's so good. I'm so happy that you've you know, come into that space and yeah. really own that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, with even with you being kind of like, oh, why am I so obsessed with this? But like you brought it and it was yeah. so important. Yeah. It was, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And that's where, that's like, yeah, part of your journey and also part of a lot of us who are stepping more into our soul business, who are stepping more into our calling, like to start to own what it is we feel passionate about. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and I, exa it's exactly that, and it might not look as we think it's going to look, you know, if I ever thought this is what I'm going to be passionate about, that's a bit weird, <laughs> but, but it kind of, it's, it's, it comes from a, I guess what you're doing is helping people do is it comes from a true place, like that place inside, and that's what you're doing with this work, is helping people to touch on that, so a passion won't necessarily look as we expect it's going to look. Right. Right, and it's like taking off judgment and seeing what's yeah. there, just like we do in our session, just like we do in our work with ourselves. Beautiful. Yay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so we're wrapping up our hour now. This has been so cool and yeah. so informative, and I actually at some point I wanted to take notes. <laughs> I'll go back and listen because some of the things you said were absolute gold. Um, so, and I also, you know, it's it's amazing. Um, and I just want to check if there's any more, th we, we touched on everything. Um, and finally, you know, Maxine, we both live in Pardeskana in Israel, um, and Maxine in a, in a month and a half time, you're running a retreat called the Dance of Life. Dance of Life, uh, the magic in the space between. Mm. It's, uh, and it's all of this, it's all of this, it's, um, going to be breath work, Working, teaching and working on the nervous system regulation, coming together in community, sacred fire, um, probably in a dance, um, we will be able to. And um, it's just going to be a weekend of togetherness. It's for men and for women. There's only four spots left, actually. Um, Amazing. So yeah, your retreats go really quick. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only, well, it's only 18 people, so it's an intimate space because, I, again, it's about holding it, and I'll be holding it with uh, a male facilitator, Uri Dvori. Um, Whose dad made this cup. Oh, <laughs> he's a great guy, and yeah. he is, um, yeah, with, and it's going to be special. And that's happening near Tel Aviv. That's happening near Tel Aviv, and then in February also I'm going to be starting, hopefully February, with a colleague psychologist, Lauren Isaacs, a nervous system regulation program for women, um, to an, a, like a proper program to help people, what does this mean, how do we work with it, and she does polyvagal theory, which is another approach, and then I bring my stuff, and we're building that right now as well. 
amazing love. It's so awesome and yeah. so needed. I know. Yes. It yeah. speaks exactly to what we've talked about today. Well, this is it. It's not enough one session a week. We need to be in a, in a uh, container and yes. to keep to really build it. So that's the idea is to bring more people the opportunity to really learn the stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. Amazing. So how, people, how can people find you? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we'll put tags on the, on every, you know, everywhere. I've got two, the Facebook page and group. I don't have a website 24 years later. Um, <laughs> you don't need a website to be successful. Yeah, ladies. there you go. Um, but I will, I will the group, my, I guess my groups on Facebook. Okay. All right. So we'll link to your groups here in the, in the, in the chat. Um, if you have any questions for Maxine or for me, feel free to type it in the chat. Feel free to message her privately, message Absolutely. me privately. Um, and like you said, the container. So we have a nine month container coming up in about a week and a half. We're beginning, um, a nine month container for sacred business. So this is for women that are, um, just starting their sacred business or women that are, um, in business and want to maybe pivot or want to grow. Um, and get more accurate because we're, we're in a nine month transformational container to really find your truth, find your soul calling, your soul's voice, your soul's message, and bring that out to the world mm -hmm. through gathering Amazing. community, through your sacred offerings, um, through holding transformational space. And I'm so honored and blessed to have Maxine as part of the, as part of our team because right, it's better together. And she'll be um, also holding space during the nine-month container to to help us understand uh, how to be more trauma-informed, how to be safe in our space. And she's also going to do for us a breathwork uh, session because as therapists and, and healers and business owners, it's really important for us to breathe and for us to take time for ourselves. Um, so that's starting December 20th. I'll also leave a link in the comments for the landing page for that. The applications are open. If you're interested at all, fill out an application and we'll do a free um, call just to see where you're at. And you can also taste my style of coaching. And yeah, that's about it. I'm really excited. Thank you so much for your time. Thank it's been you. amazing. Amazing. Fun. Really fun. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.